Now to the reserve pilot chute. To overcome previous pilot chute design deficiencies, which resulted in unstable launches and erratic inflations, Relative Workshop engineers designed a spring which was both strong to ensure a positive launch and physically balanced with this counterweight to help prevent tumbling upon release. To our physically balanced spring, we added an aerodynamically balanced envelope, resulting in the first totally balanced reserve pilot chute. The new Vector 2 pilot chute spring has more coils of heavier wire. Static balance of the spring is achieved with the addition of a counterweight to the light end. Until now, all reserve pilot chutes have been designed like a parachute, with most of the weight and all of the drag at one end. Such pilot chutes will produce significant drag only after they have reached the end of the bridle, turned their heavy end upright, and inflated. And on the way to the end of the bridle, they tend to tumble because they are out of balance. When turbulent air strikes them broadside, it travels through the mesh end, but pushes on the heavy fabric end, resulting in a spin. This tumbling is not only time consuming, but it is dangerous because a tumbling pilot chute and bridle might entangle with each other or with the jumper and his equipment. The new Vector 2 pilot chute is symmetrical. It is constructed more like a balloon than a parachute. It doesn't have a high drag end and a low drag end, and it doesn't have to reach the end of the bridle before it can inflate. The result is a pilot chute that reaches the end of the bridle faster and it doesn't tumble on the way. This is especially important if your bridle is 18 feet long, as with square reserves and free bags. To show how well our pilot chute behaves in turbulence, let's choose the toughest example possible, the triple burble above an AFF student and instructors. First, let's see how a normal pilot chute behaves in this hostile environment. Notice that even though the pilot chute jumps well clear of the student's pack, it stands little chance of a clean launch. A conversation with any AFF instructor will confirm the horrible pilot chute hesitations they have to put up with. Al Gramondo, owner of AFF East and producer of a recent video on AFF techniques. Ever since we started doing AFF, we've been plagued with pilot chute hesitations. We tried every kind of pilot chute available, but nothing seemed to work. That is, until Bill sent us up a few of his new pilot chutes. I was absolutely amazed at how well they worked. Notice that the Vector 2 pilot chute can inflate even before it reaches the end of the bridle. It literally blows up like a balloon because that's exactly what it is. This allows it to produce more drag immediately out of the container, which means it reaches the end of the bridle faster. Also, notice its lack of tendency to spin. If our new pilot chute can handle these extreme conditions, just think how well it will work with just your burble to conquer. Such clean pilot chute launches mean far less chance of a horseshoe malfunction. But, you say, I jump a square reserve in a free bag. So if I have a horseshoe malfunction, it'll still work. Not so, my friend. All a free bag will do is allow the possibility of a good reserve deployment in a horseshoe situation, and then only if you help. To illustrate this point, we put a mid-sized square reserve in a free bag in the main container of a vector. To make sure that nothing was holding the bag in the container after the pin was pulled, we unstitched the bottom corners of the container. The bag could then be lifted out of the container by a force equal to its own weight. We then deployed, at terminal, a standard 18-foot long, 2-inch wide free bag bridle, which was connected to a hand-deployed pilot chute. The test jumper, Bob Nixon, held onto the pilot chute and waited for something to happen. As you can see, the bridle produced barely enough drag to stand the bag up in the container, and certainly not enough to lift it out. Does this mean a free bag won't work? Well, not at all, but it does mean that you have to give it a little help. As this next sequence demonstrates, once the free bag is out of the container, the long bridle produces some drag but more importantly, stabilization to prevent the bag from tumbling through the lines, thus permitting a good opening. The moral to the story? If you ever experience a horseshoe, you must pull the bag out of the container yourself before the free bag system will work. It would seem simpler, however, to use the Vector 2 pilot chute 
to help prevent the horseshoe in the first place. Well, so much for high speed. What about low speed? Just how well does this new pilot shoot work after a breakaway? In a word, superbly. In the following series of tests, the reserve is pulled immediately after breakaway. In order to determine exactly how far a jumper falls after a breakaway before reserve opening, we mounted a video camcorder on the test jumper's leg facing downward toward a convex mirror and a digital altimeter, thus affording a good view of the breakaway, the reserve pilot chute launch, and reserve canopy opening with an accurate altitude readout on the same screen. Using various size performance design and glide path canopies, we got openings in the range of 140 to 190 feet. That's a savings of 50 to 100 feet over distances fallen using conventional fabric mesh reserve pilot chutes.